Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Sparthing 160 EN podcast. This is podcast number 63. And uh, I mean, it's safe to say it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a fiery one. As ever, I'm joined by my two good friends, my two guests. I'll start off with uh, with Steph first. Steph, how you doing, bro? I'm doing uh on an individual basis, I'm doing fine as a sporting fan. I'm on a coma, and uh, <laughs> and I don't know how to get out of this coma because it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Today we lost on the 23, three one, and uh, and and uh, volleyball we got spanked again by uh, our rival, and we'll talk about it. So I'm in coma. <laughs> I honestly, you're better off in a coma than watching this shit. To be honest, so uh, yeah. Anyways, we're all, we're also joined by Christian. Christian, how you doing, bro? I'm doing as well as someone who's been kicked in the nuts repeatedly for like <laughs> a couple decades straight. Would feel <laughs> <laughs> fuck. All right, that's <laughs> that's how we're starting it off. I'm loving it. I'm loving the optimism. Um, let's start off with the question, boys. Um, cause, uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, cause I'm sure that the Spartan Eustace will also agree with us. Um, but anyways, first, uh, question comes in from Bully at her Shanu 17. Um, question is, is Cedars being naive? Is holding on to Bruno killing us more than helping us? Thoughts on Pedro Menj and Cedars substitution timings. That must be around, uh, about, um, or I guess on all games. Uh, anyway, Steph, I'll start off with you. What do you think, dude? So, is Silas being naive at time? Yes. Oh, I guess. I don't know if he's being told by somebody else from uh, upper management what to do. And if that's the case, then he's being naive. And uh, and um, uh, he's the only one to blame. Uh, but... He's being naive at times because he's insisting the same players that can't produce. Uh, it's obvious we already lost the um, the the league of knowledge. We have no shot. Let's be realistic. I hate when people say mathematicament. We're still there. Get the fuck out of here. There's no t- there's at no the t- rate we're going. It's going to be mathematically impossible by March, and then those yeah. people will be able to shove it. <laughs> I would I would say by February. But okay. <laughs> yeah, but, that's that's not taking into account we're gonna lose points until then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be realistic. Um, we we basically have to play some tough games away, like we just spoke about. We have to go to Guimarães, Vila de Conde, Dragão, Luz, Moreirense, Famalicão, uh, all tough uh, stadiums. If we can even win against them at home, and uh, Every single club I just mentioned, we lost against them, I think, except for Guimarães and Braga. Um, so, yes, he's been completely naive because by now I would have said, Gizé, vai cantar reggaeton, see you later. Uh, Bolazzi, he seemed to be a good player, but you're not serving the purpose that we wanted. You can score goals. You, you just run and you forget about the ball. So, to me, I know you guys like him, but he's, he's a great guy. I mean, I see him on Twitter all the time, but on the pitch, he's not that good. He doesn't score goals. So, to me, then you can go back. If he was that good, he wouldn't have, uh, he wouldn't have left England. Um, yeah. But, you know, um, I would give a shot to uh, our youth. I'd promote our youth, not call them for practice and not play them. I would call our youth and play them and start pl- planning this season 2020-2021. This season is done. Uh, and then the portion of the other question, what was it? Uh, sorry, let me get it right now. It was... Um, is, uh, is holding on to Bruno killing us more than helping us? Um, I think it will be eventually because we killing his motivation. And... Um, and then we, we promised him that we would let him go. So if we don't let him go now, um, and then he, he's the only one that in the team that plays above average, everyone else is playing below average. 
it, it's just a matter of time before he breaks down and he, himself he doesn't uh, promote, uh, produce. And then at the same time, our team playing so shitty, he's losing his value. His value is going down because um, the clubs are not blind and they see what's going on. And um, so if we sell them now, we could still get a chunk of money. Um, well, I don't even know how many agents are involved in this trans- trans- transaction. So mm-hmm. we have like two, Miguel Pino as agent and uh, greedy George Mintz. So that's two commissions that Sporting would have to pay. Uh, so I think, I think yeah, it, it, it's not going to hurt us as far as the quality of the player, but maybe we'll kill his motivation. And um, if we don't sell him now, I think in the summertime, no one's going to pay $60 million for him unless he does a great little bill. Uh, and then maybe. So, But that's all, always a gamble, of course. Yeah. Oh, and uh, timing of uh, Celia's substitution. That was uh, Bully's last question. Way off all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Way off. Agreed. And that's all I'm going to say. He's off, he's off all the time. You yeah, can't agreed. expect the player to come in in, in five, 10 minutes to be productive. You need to give him at least uh, 20 to 15 minutes plus the ad- additional uh, uh, overtime. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. In- injury. Time. Um, yeah. Uh, next comment, it's more of a comment, comes from David, uh, David Claudio at David Strife 35 He says, I hate Verandas. I hope we get through these dark days. You and me both, buddy. Um, next question comes in from Joel De Silva at Joel Leon underscore 073. Uh, Christian, he asks, expectations on Sparar. Um, would you want BDC back in case he would run for president again? Or would you prefer someone completely new? And his last question, considering we currently already have 12 defeats, how many defeats do you think are we going to end with the season or end the season with? Um, So Sparar, I think, is actually going to be pretty serviceable. And I think that we're going to notice right away what having a striker that isn't Luis Philippe is going to look like. I mean, I think it's going to be it's going to be like, wow, damn, we didn't we really didn't do this earlier. Oh, wow. We really went the whole summer window and knew we had this roster and, and, and didn't sign someone. So, I mean, I do think he's going to be good. Um, he, he's, he's a clinical finisher. He, he, he's a poacher. He's mobile. I mean, I like what I've seen. I, I find it hard to believe that he's just going to come here and forget how to play. But obviously, it's possible. But <laughs> I, I, I do think that he, he will be a good signing. And I am very, very out on Luis Philippe right now. Um, so, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm happy. And this guy should immediately start the first game he's available he should start like that's the other thing about sporting if he signs weagle he's in the lineup immediately sporting signs players and they like integrate them for two months it's like man he is better than anyone we have just fucking put him in and he'll figure it out you know that's my attitude a lot of the time yeah um do you want bdc back in case you'd run for president again or would you prefer someone new I mean, the guy, the guy, is, they, they've ruined that guy's life. I mean, they've, the, the media has, like, tarred him. The, you know, the CM people, like, in his apartment building. The guy can't go anywhere. Um, I mean, I, I, I do think that his ideas can live on. But I, I just think that, you know, him himself and the instant fury that he invokes on certain people, it's like, this guy immediately infuriates, like, 35% of the people, like, with it, no matter what, no matter what, he, no matter what he says, no matter what he can possibly do, these people will always hate him. So, you know, it's just not worth it to go with him. But I mean, the ideas that he rose to power on in 2013, 2012, are the, or I guess it was 2011 technically. The ideas that he rose to power on are the ideas that someone else needs to rise to power on because the themes are all the same. Um, you know, it's less. The, the third party ownership kind of stuff because that's all illegal now. Um, but I mean, the agents and, and George Men's back at sport thing, all this stuff. I mean, it's like time is a flat circle type shit. I mean, it's all the same. And so, someone with the exact same ideas and who's also charismatic like that, I think that would would have a you know they would they'd become a celebrity and they they'd win like seventy thirty if there was an election. You know, so I think that. I think that that's what we need. I don't, I don't even 
to be fair, I don't think it's Juan Benedito either. Um, I did like the guy, and I did vote for him last time, but I don't think he's the guy to, to do the monumental task of, of what's at hand right now. But I would welcome him in, in an, an administration. Um, and considering we already have 12 defeats, how many defeats are we going to end the season with? Hmm, tough one. I'm going to go 21. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, funny enough. Uh, next, uh, I guess it's a question, comes in from Bruno, uh, Bruno SKO 23 on Twitter. He asks, how do we get these clowns out of the club? Um, I mean, we have an AG coming up. Um, I, I don't know if you guys want to touch know? on that now. or I was going to add, yeah, let's, let's, talk, let's touch up. on that now. So, Rajiv Yovs came out today saying that uh, a decision will be made about this AG on the 21st. We're currently in the 22nd of January, meaning it'll it's probably take another month before. 23rd in Portugal, exactly. So, um, what do you guys think of this potential Assemblea Geral? Uh, do you think it's going to happen? And even if it does happen, is anything going to really happen from it? What do you guys think? But I think um, the Assemblea Geral, it, it'll be good. It'll give uh, the, the voice to Sporting Kings just to, to voice their opinion. Uh, but be careful. Don't go insulting the guy because he might revoke your socio uh, card. So, and, yep. and that's what the dilemma is. Uh, we, we live in a democratic country in Portugal, uh, but this guy is behaving like a dictator. And he's basically saying, ah, 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 you call me names. I'm going to revoke you, your membership. So whoever goes to the uh, pavilion or wh whatever place that will do it, that will, ha will have to be careful. So there's two ways we can kick him out. The, the the one way is that Rumo Sporting, which he they already gave the signatures and just they just waiting on the confirmation uh, of uh, the val validity of the documentation, and then they'll have to prove that he did he did something that would hurt that that hurt the club so much that they have a reason to kick him out and then go for elections uh, to do the same thing with Bruno Carvalho, but Steve Will. So that's going to be a tough one. And then the second way is uh, himself to ask uh, to resign. Uh, which that's what most people are hoping for, that he steps up and he resigns. Because uh, as we can all see, including those ones that voted for him, now they, mo the, the vast majority, they regret it uh, because he's a doctor by trade. He's not a capable empresario, like you say in Portugal. He has no business in being in front of a big club such as Sporting Club Portugal. Uh, it's, it's not only football. We're talking about how many modalities plus football. 60-something, uh, I believe. So he's dealing with a lot of moving parts, a lot of money. There's a lot of incoming money, and he has to know how to manage all that. And his financial guy, I think he's okay. Uh, but when was the last time they came out in public and gave out a speech of how, what's going on with our club? It's been a minute, am I right? It's been a long minute. Yeah, it's been a while. The last time that Verandas came on uh, on TV was, I believe, uh, Namadeira, when he was complaining about those fans making th those stupid noises uh, upon arrival of the team. Uh, but, you know, so that's the only two ways we can kick him out, so... We'll see which one will be, which one will be first. I was hoping that Verandes would have some Sportingismo left in him, and would step up and say, uh, "I quit," um, and I resign. And even that, when he resigns, the whole process still takes up to six months. Um, so he would still be the president for a minute uh, until you know. Uh, individual A, B, or C, they would put together, you know, their teams so to go for elections. So do, do I want him out? Yes. He was, should have been out yesterday. He has no business. He doesn't know what's going on. He's, and he's fucking up the club big time. We, we're about to be, uh, th this will be the worst uh, performance of uh, our senior team ever in the uh, history of uh, sporting. Mm-hmm. We were, I think, three defeats away. Mm -hmm. 
From tying, yeah. yes. Yeah. From tying, yeah. It agree. probably won't be the worst points record, but it will be the worst season in terms of losses. I mean, I, it could be. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to go ahead and say that with certainty because it could. <laughs> unless, unless, unless the only because I don't think Seal is cutting it. Seal is struggling motivating the team, and and you saw against uh, Sporting Braga when we lost two one yesterday that the team the team lost completely control uh, of 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 themselves towards the end of the game. I mean, yesterday was a game that we, we should have won to prove a point, but we couldn't win. And Braga is actually up and coming. So, player for player, they might have a better team than us, too. Sim, 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 sim. Verdade. They have a better bench than we do. When when he looks at his bench, he finds no solutions, he, you know. But that's Honestly. that's on him. That's on him. I mean, use, use your youth. Start planning the next season. Forget about these fucking clowns. Send Gizette back. But no, Ferro, which is the, actually uh, the coach, he said, no, they can't even allow Gizet. I was so disappointed when he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, agreed. Anyways, last question comes in from underscore Pirsch only underscore at Diogo190618. Uh, another three-party question. Uh, he says, uh, last transfer target. Uh, I guess he means uh, what, what targets or what positions should we look for? Uh, second question, opinion about the president and what he sh- what should he do? We've sort of answered that. And number three, your thoughts about the Juve Leu um, communication, uh, the communicado, I guess. I'm not I'm not aware of this Juve Leu um, communicado. Do you guys know? I haven't seen any. If there's a specific yes. one today, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Or was it that. was it yesterday? No, no, it was today. I I read the whole thing. It's, what was it? it? It's basically it's, it's a. No, no, it was pretty long. Uh, saying that Josh. Oh, Sandy, it. you want to give us the the Cliff Notes version? Yeah, they, they basically said Josh it's time for you to go because we lost X amount of games with three games away of the uh, all time uh, worst season ever. We're 19 points away from my revival and 15 points away to the last last place. Basically, meaning that we close it to. The, the ultimum classificado com primeiro, and that's a fact. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and then he, he brought up that, that this is the worst season ever, uh, even in the uh, under twenty three, which we lost again today. We were in first place. Now we in third place. I think uh, Riwad they su- surpassed us, and um, Juvenis. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we didn't make the cut. Uh, to the uh, championship rounds, we actually on the lower bracket fighting to stay in the first division of under seventeen. Did you guys know that? How is that possible? Yes. Yeah, so, so basically, the way it is in Portugal, under seventeen, the the the, the top, top two teams, of the table go the up top to two it. teams in. Uh, so they they have phase one, phase two, and then the final phase for the championship. So we didn't even make the phase two. We got eliminated in phase one, and then you drop into a relegation playoff. A then. Relegation playoff against, uh, I don't know how many teams, if it's eight or ten. And, uh, of course, we're in first place in that fucking re- relegation playoff. <laughs> we won every game so far. But, <laughs> but you know, under 17, yeah, we don't, we don't even, we're not even fighting for the title race. Uh, under 15, we're doing pretty good. Uh, the under nineteen, they picked up the slack. We even uh, tied at Seychelles against Benfica zero zero. That's when we lost against Benfica on the under twenty three and the the senior team. But you know, anyway, that's all I got. Yeah, fair. Well, and, I actually uh, I actually really liked what Juvelo did on Instagram yesterday. You know, posting from all all corners of the globe. You know the mm-hmm. support that they had for their for their message of you know getting Verandas out. It's pretty cool. I mean, it it's everywhere. I mean, there's people in all parts of the world, all parts of Europe. There's people in New Jersey, you know, where I live, with signs. I mean, I think the, the latest mo- the movement has legs. I'll say that much. Yeah, the latest well, this- post it was posted five hours ago from Toronto. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the next. 
the title of the communicado was El Fim da Linha. Mm. And he basically, they state everything, what's wrong, what's going on with Sporting. And it's a great, really good, uh, great communicado. You should go to Record, they have it. Um, everything they said is pretty good, but then when you, when you pull a stunt like you did at the Derby, it, it, there's no validity behind it. Well, they'll argue that they were provoked first because they've been totally fucked this whole season. By I their... know, but did you see what they did, though, to Maxi? I don't think it was to Maxi. It Maxie wasn't was, towards Maxi, though. Yeah. I, know, I know it wasn't to Maxi, but, I mean, I mean, you know you, you're on the spotlight, so so don't do stuff like that. Do do simple stuff. like. Yeah, yes. I'll admit it helps Verenda's case against them. Oh, to, big time. But, big time. but, I mean, at the same time, it's like, if if they fight back in any way, they'll they'll be spun as like you know out of control hooligans. So I mean, but at the same time, what are they supposed to do? Just not respond? I mean, I, I they're pretty. I'd argue they're they're under attack. They have to respond somehow. I mean, they may have responded the wrong way, but I don't know what the right way really is to you know get a message across. You know, it's going to be like twenty thousand twenty thousand euros or penalties, and the club has to pay for it. And there were some flares on the field yesterday when everything, when all hell broke loose, but no one really noticed because all hell was breaking loose. <laughs> all, all I'm saying is I blame also Sporting for that because they pay a company to uh, uh, to frisk everybody before they go into the stadium while apparently... They're, they're only yeah, frisking for Joe Valero scarves and t-shirts, man. Fuck, man. But they're looking that, for Joe Valero scarves. They've missed the flares. <laughs> how many very lights? Uh, more than 20. Yeah, there was a lot. It was they stopped the game for almost ten minutes. Yeah, I'd say probably like six, six, seven, maybe. Uh, you it was ten minutes extra time too. Or not I, yesterday, but oh, that I didn't like. It. I didn't like that. I think it was embarrassing to uh, to Wild Club, and it, it, it gave more reason to uh, a matter of the Verandas to talk shit about Juventus Leonina. They yeah. should they should kill him with class. Not now. Yeah, not that way. Not that way. They, they, at this moment, they have to be on their best behavior. I agree with you, Steph. Exactly. Go chant. Go, 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 yeah. go sing. Go support them. But don't do that stuff uh, because there's there's ladies, there's there's uh, uh, children watching the game, and they got all that smoke on their faces and shit, you know. And and this game was being played across the world, and they gave a poor image of our club. Then now they think we fucking hooligans. Yeah, it kind of made us look like the Serbian League or something. Um, if you were just tuning in for that game, you might actually think the Portuguese League was interesting. Mm-hmm. If you did a little, if you did a little more research, you'd you'd eventually stumble across the truth. Um, shit, even even the commentator <laughs> said this shit doesn't even go on in Argentina no more. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, now that you mentioned it, I'm I'm thinking about it. So it's a it's a it's a derby. It's a super high security game. These guys are already on, like, the shortest rope of all time. The fact that they got 20 flares in there is impressive. impressive. Or Were more. Or ass? more. But, but don't. Befica, Befica side also had flares. They just never threw it onto the field, to be fair to them. But sure, sure. The fact yeah, that, because, yeah, flares are the, even the, inside is fucked. The, the, the Befica clock was all the way on top because usually they put them, like, all the way on top. So... I don't know. Maybe that's why they didn't throw into the field. Uh, but it, it, there's no reason for, even if you feel provoked by another clock, there's no reason for you to act like an animal. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't like it. They 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 uh, they damaged uh, some chairs in, inside the stadium. Uh, you know, they, way too aggressive. And then the smoke was pitch black. It, it affected the players as well. I mean. They had to go and play, smelling that shit, breathing that shit. Yeah. And the, the kids, the, the wives, the, I don't know, grandmas, aunts, you name it. This is a soccer game. It's not a fucking, uh, you know, battle zone. I don't know. That's why sometimes I, I like the clocks, but when they behave this way, but then I agree. We don't need them. If you're going to behave like clowns, then don't show up to the stadium. Go over there and chant. I, I'm, I'm okay, of course, giving them a discount on the game boxes. Yeah, I'm okay with that because they, they truly dedicate a lot of time to Spartan. 
But behaving like that, I don't like. But I blame the PSP Genier. What the fuck are they doing? They just standing yeah. there. They're not fucking reacting. I mean, here in the United States, what happens? You go to any NBA game, NFL game, NHL game. If there's a fan that throws a fucking beer into into the arena, what happens? That fan Life is gone. Man. Lifetime, Lifetime man. man, yeah, gone. That, that's it, and that's what he should do in Portugal. Put the fucking responsibility in our law enforcement. Those comebacks, they get paid, and they don't fucking do shit. Bro, even in England, ch- racist chance they can find the person who's doing it. Yeah, so you can't tell me they how. can't find the fucker that threw a flare onto the field. Or you, you or know why? You know why lines, they you know can I mean? find him? It's called technology. You would think <laughs> that this guy's whole thing is he wants war against these people that he would buy the technology to find them, right? Yeah, exactly. I- I'm sure we have the technology available. Of course we, we do, man. We have. I mean, then he should release a big triumphant statement. We have identified blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And we have banned 100%. them. Love who, me. You know? who, who, who played the game? Wasn't it Sport TV? Yes. yes. Okay, so at one point, Sport TV was just focusing on the, on the players being thrown into the field. So I'm pretty sure some expert with cameras, you know, like <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the VAR yeah. could find them. One by one. That same, that same, yeah, that same camera angle can easily find where the flare was thrown, and somebody can easily go onto that section and pick out the person. You know why they're not doing it, Danny and Chris? Because Portugal, they insist on being retarded, traditional, <laughs> and, they, and they're not, they don't want to evolve. It's called evolution. You have to find other ways instead of instead of a president, the president of the club, and the club itself getting fines. The the, the Portuguese government. Because they get a lot of money from these clubs. Let's not forget that. The government of Portugal gets a big chunk of money from Sporting, Porto, Benfica, and all well, the other tax, clubs. Like, tax like anything else. Exactly. They get and a lot of money. They're generating huge revenues, so the taxes are obviously high. So Sporting and all the Portuguese clubs shouldn't even pay for law enforcement. It should be for free because they're getting their money. They're cut. So, so they, they, we should hold... The, the the uh, law enforcement in Portugal are responsible for this shit, it, but it's a difficult process for them to understand that. You know, I mean, at the stadiums, what do we have? We have cops and we have uh, security. I think uh, private security. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, ev- in America, every stadium ha- hires like a third party security, and then there's obviously like state cops or whatever there. Got it. So. So the private security, as, see, as soon as they see a fan acting up, they will be the ones responding to that fan. Am I right? Most likely because there's, you know, certain on each section. So they're in most position to, like, see people doing bad things or whatever. Yeah. Got it. And then, and then if it's something like that's, that's a, a severe, like a, a misdemeanor or something like that, the police officer will show up. Yeah, well, then the security guy will then tell the cop, and then maybe that guy walks out in cuffs instead of walking out, you know, on his own, you know? Exactly. So that in Portugal is not happening. They see I don't think same, anyone's ever been arrested at a game. No, for, they for see anything. the same fucking people throwing objects, skates, moedas, uh, you name it, uh, and, and they don't do shit. If they, if they had the approach that we have here in America, they, this would change immediately, immediately. Yeah, I think it would yeah. just change. Like, if you made an example out of, like, three people, they might all just chill out as a natural reaction to that. Exactly. You would bar them from the stadium forever, yeah. and you'd make an example out of them. Listen, you you, you want to behave like this, you're going to be barred from the, sta- the stadium. Honestly, we're giving Verandas too many good ideas. Because <laughs> I don't know how we he all know, come up with we this all know shit on the podcast. <laughs> Fuck, or Rosario Alves is gonna listen to this and then fucking tell him. If he does this in the next like month, I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Rosario Alves, the real president of the sport, you guys. Anyways, and last uh, last comment comes in literally just now from Al Costa 37, soccer dad number 37. He says, This is a freaking nightmare. And this is a freaking nightmare. Um, let's just jump right into the Benfica game. I know we touched on some talking points on there, but we'll go more into the game now. Uh, the 11 was as followed. Um, we had Maximiliano in net, Acuna, Mathieu, Ilotti, and Ristovsky in defense. 
Wendell Dumbia Fernandes in midfield with Kamashu for the injured Vietu, uh, Blasi and Philippe up top. Um, we had substitutions of Borja, Pedro Mendes, and Plata for Kamashu, Dumbia, and Blasi. Uh, Benfica's lineup was Odisseas in goal, André Almeida, Dias, Ferro, Grimaldo in defense. Um, they had Gabriel with Weigel, uh, Pizzi, Chiquinho, or Servi uh, um, on the wings, and Vinicius up top. And they had uh, Seferovic, Rafa, and Tarap come in for Shikingu, Vinicius, and Servi. And let me just say, before we get into anything, uh, let me give my credit to Bruno Lage, who I think has been a phenomenal manager since joining uh, Benfica. That Rafa sub for Shikingu was, um, I mean, it, w- it was kind of expected, but it was exactly what Benfica needed at that moment. So, you know, credit to that, because he did get their two goals. Uh, but anyways, Christian, I'll start off with you. What were your thoughts on the game, dude? Yeah, I mean, so I guess the way I would put this game is we didn't play well, but we played better than I thought we were going to, and we had chances. So, it, although I will say Benfica probably had better chances, I didn't think Sporting was, they didn't just roll over and play dead completely. Like, if you go individual by individual, I don't think anyone really had a good game. But the overall performance that it created truly wasn't that bad. And I think if you go player for player on Bifika as well, I don't think you're going to find too many eye-popping you know, statistics from, from individual players either. Um, you know, the shots are, are pretty even, everything like that. So it, it feels a little hard done. Um, you know, we feel a little hard done. But, I mean, we had, we had some players who out there who, who I mean, I th- Dumbia in Wendell were absolutely atrocious. Um, yeah. Luis Philippe was atrocious. Um, even Matthew, I think that might have been the worst game I've ever seen Matthew play. Um, he was atrocious. He, couldn't complete any. Elodie had a pretty good first half, has to be said. He too. did, and then and then it kind of went to shit. Elodie had three golden opportunities to score. Yeah. Two were corners, I believe, and one was a free kick. And he was just right there in front of the net, and he put it right at the keeper every single time. Amazing. Amazing consistency. Um, yeah, and, I mean, it's just frustrating, man. It, it's that type of game where you just, you know, you're, you're, you, you're like, oh, we dodged the ball, we dodged the ball, we're creating chances. Maybe, maybe it's going to happen. Maybe we're going to sneak out of here. one nothing. And then, I mean, the, the, sub, the subs in this game are truly hilarious. If anyone's ever played football manager, that's what you do in football manager. You put in three attacking players in the 88th minute. Like, <laughs> come on, man. It's amateurish. Um, and it, it's obviously the result that is expected, probably. Um, but, you know, Benfica really didn't, didn't really stand out to me too much. But, yeah, I mean, I'd say probably like 1 1 would have been a. Would have been a fair result, but what good what good would that have done for us, anyways? You know, moral victory. Yeah, yeah, agreed. How about you, Steph? Oh, Paola, um, I, I'm not going to take too long because uh, um, Bruno Lage he, out, he outclassed um, uh, Silas. Um, he, he's a better coach, more experienced. You could tell right away. He's uh, he can. You can see things that Silas doesn't see at all, and um, the whole team. I agree with you, Lodi. In the first half, was actually decent, and then in the second half, we saw the old Lodi. So, not impressed at all. Um, they Befica marked uh, Bruno Fernandes real well. We didn't see much of Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Lu- Luis Felipe is a totally total disappointment. Uh, he came from Pass Ferreira. He, for some fucking reason, he thinks he's a crack when he hasn't won. A, he thinks he's a crack because he scored like seven goals for us when we literally had no other players to play up top, and we currently have no other players to play up top. So he has like a he, he has like a mediocre goal scoring record, but he's probably like our second leading scorer over the past year. So like that's why he thinks he's a hot shot. But he's fucking fat, dude. He's worthless. But my thing, my thing is to be a crack, you have to have like under your belt x amount of uh, uh, Portuguese leagues. In this case, 
X amount of uh, Tassas Portugal, X amount of uh, uh, League Cups. You know, it's it's he hasn't won nothing at all. I mean, the League Cup, no one gives a fuck about that cup. It's a good cup when you don't win anything. Then, you know, it's it's relevant. But, you know, um, we're not going to win that, that cup, obviously. We lost against Braga. Um, but this game was was terrible. And and having a bunch of players that they think they know it all, but we don't win. They, not, they haven't been champions for years. Uh, it, it bothers me. They, they should be more humble. They should run more. They should go mm-hmm. more after the 50-50 balls. No agarra, no espírito de sacrifício. They forget about the lemon de Sport and Vivusa and Gloria. Uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they don't represent Sporting whatsoever. And, and, and that bothers me. Um, we had a decent game. I agree with Chris. We could have tied the game. Camacho, he had a couple of golden opportunities. The ball on the post. And then we had mm-hmm. the... Uh, uh, what the, a different the, game that would have been if that would have gone in the 10th minute. Yeah. It, oh yeah, yeah. Come on, uh, Instead of losing two nothing, we would have lost two one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But no, we, we 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 had some good shots, like you said, Ilori. Yeah. Uh, even uh, Luis Flip when uh, when uh, he got a header from uh, from Bruno Fernandes. But we can score for shit. There's no motivation. There's the the lack of uh, confidence. That's the the word I was looking for. And until we don't regain the confidence, then we're not going to play well. Uh, we sometimes we start well, but then we start losing the the the, the performance of the whole team because we can't score. Uh, and then when you can't score, the 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 stress will go th- towards the midfield and the defense. They start feeling the stress, and that's what happened against Mifika. We lost towards the end, and that's what happened against Braga. We lost we lost towards the end. Um, and we're not going to go too far with this team, and, and even with this coach. Uh, it's, I don't dislike Silas, but it looks like he's lost, and sometimes he's tempted to do some late su- substitutions that makes no sense to anybody. Guys, this is the thing about Silas. If Verandas falls, Silas has to fall too. He's collateral damage, unfortunately. So I don't, I mean, I like the guy. I think that he's working with dog shit, but I also think deep down that he's probably not the guy either. And I think if Verandas falls anyways, he has to just kind of fall as collateral damage. What are your thoughts on that? If, if, if I was, yeah, I, I agree with you. If I was uh, uh, the president of Sporting Portugal, the first thing I would install in these people would be, okay, come with me to our academy and come with me to our museum. And I would instill into them, listen, our club was based with these principles. Esforço, dedicação, devoção e glória. Eis o Sporting. Que quer ser um dos maiores da Europa. I don't think they get that at all. I don't think they know when Sporting was founded. I don't think they know how many cups Sporting has, the Portuguese cups, League Cups, maybe League Cups because it's only two. But I... I bet you they know nothing about Sporting, the DNA of Sporting. And I think that's the way the problem is. And uh, I'm, But, yeah, Chris, I agree with you. If Sila goes, I think yeah. Verandas will go too, or vice versa. If, if Veranda goes, Silas will go because the new president is going to want to bring his own coach. Look at the, what, the, or look what the current guy did with the old guy's coach. I mean, that's like a comical example of, like, what happens, but... At least Silas has coached a game before, you know. I think I think Silas is is gone by the end of the season anyway, regardless yeah. if Verenda stays or not. And I think well, it's, it's unfortunate because I don't think he should. He's gonna need some yeah, more exactly. scapegoats. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and it's a shame because I think I, I I hear what you guys say and I agree. I, I but I also think Silas, uh, man, he hasn't been. Look at the team he has. Like, I, yeah. I would like to see. You know, Silas has done a lot. Okay, we're going off his his. His prior work, but at Bilinitz, he beat the likes of Benfica and Porto. Um, I've seen some sort of progression in this team. We there, there's moments where we we definitely play a lot better. I think of the four nothing against PSV. I think of uh, I think of even us against Porto. Like I, I see something that, that Silas definitely works with the team with. Um, his his substitutions will also frustrate the fuck out of me. So. 
there's also negative points to to his to his uh, to his abilities too. Um, yeah, I, I would like to see him with a few transfer windows under his belt, um, but I would definitely like to see him with a different leader, a different uh, a different pre- whether that's a president or whether that's uh, whatever Jerry Wilds is, um, just a different somebody different commanding the team because to go back to what we've been harping on for months now. I look at Mateus Pereira, I look at Rafinha, I look at Thierry, and I'm wondering what the fuck we did to deserve Fernando Bolasi, fucking Hesse, uh, uh, even, Hesse even Rosier. fucking squad, dude. Like, oh my God, he's not even in the squad. He's so the, bad. The, the, the Miral, the Miral, Duarte, Gom, uh, I mean. Duarte, Gom, yes. The Miral, Duarte. I want to put. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Duarte, and, exactly. I, I have a question for you guys. Do you think if we had Giuseppe Zaid, we would have been better off at this point in time? No. No. I think we would have gotten to the same. We might have taken a different road to get to the same point. You know, we, yeah. went on a, we went on a curvy road to get to this point. Maybe we would have gone a zigzag road to get to the same point, you know? <laughs> okay. But yeah. I agree with Danny. Who's I now mean, on Sport TV fucking providing commentary about our games? By the way. Hey, but I agree with Danny. Like uh, fucking uh, Silas was giving him bullshit team. This is the 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 they cannot blame the attack on the academy at all because they had the whole preseason to plan and they said they were planning it. They had the, one of the best teams ever. They said it was, uh, if I recall correctly, they said it, it was an upgrade, mm-hmm. a, a kill mm-hmm. upgrade. And then when I saw that we getting uh, loan players. It's, it's a big no-no for a big club. You don't see Porto Benfica with loan players. Sporting could never get loan players. Because when you get loan players, these, their, their mindset is like this. If I can pull, pull off a great season, great. If I don't pull up a, a great season, who gives a shit? I'm going back to my team. Yeah. So, so we usually typically a team that loans players but the players we loan, it's because we're looking for them to develop. So that's why teams like uh, uh, Vitoria Stubel and, uh, and Sturil, they accept our loans because they know there's quality on those players and they don't mind being the clubs to develop them. It's a different, one, different loans than Giselle and uh, Fernando, which he never played for Sporting only on the, on the end of 23, and Bolasi. It's players that were not successful in their clubs, Paris Saint-Germain, and Everton, and why the fuck we, would we think that we're going to be great with Sporting? So we just we, we just diminish ourselves, telling them, hey, we we a big club, but not really. So we'll accept, uh, you know, your leftovers. So I'm not a big I, fan I, of loans. And even on top of the loans, I've never seen a season being worked on for months have so many last-minute deals go through. Yeah, exactly. Never we, t- we, on this podcast, we said the players or the areas that needed improvement. Mm-hmm. Some of the areas, they just didn't improve and then were shocked when they were atrocious in those areas. And, and not to mention, we needed a striker and Verandas, instead of getting a striker, got a winger and tried to convince us he's a striker. And then tried to pretend him and Hesse were both strikers, actually. Exactly. I well, haven't thought yeah, about good that. Good point. I forgot about that. I forgot he also tried to say... He Bolasi really said that. Player. No one really, like, ever held his feet to the fire on that one. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I know. It's, it's unbelievable. We, we're supposed to get a number six and uh, we got stuck with Dumbia, which he can play with Cosas Viradas. He can't. He just can't. Dumbia should go play for like Casapia, who's last place in the in the no, second. No, he'll right be now. good for he'll be good for under twenty three. I mean, I mean, I, I'm well, he gonna... won't be twenty three forever. <laughs> I, I, yeah, this this Dumbia, <laughs> this Dumbia. I don't understand. Last year, I, I was liking him. Me too. Season, I was Me liking too. him. Uh-huh. I don't know what, what the, the fuck, fuck happened, happened to man. this kid. Yeah. We saw, he, we... they, he needs to be benched though, because the thing is, and Batagli is not much better. He, he, and that's the that's the worst thing. But he, he needs to be bad. benched because it's ridiculous. He still starts every game. But we have no number six. We don't. And I say the same for Wendell too. Wendell, I like Wendell a lot, but there's some games where he needs to be benched, or there's there's he's currently riding a run of form where he needs to be benched to either motivate him or to you know at least give him some rest or something. 
But then who do we replace him with? Miguel Luis, who appears Horrible. every now and again. Eduardo Henrique, who... Horrible. For fuck's sakes, I don't even think he should, he should be playing in Bill and right now. He got sent uh, off yesterday, impressively. I didn't even see it. Yeah, right? he did, yeah. Yeah, he did. Uh, uh, actually, now I'm looking through the things. It doesn't show that he has a red, but I'm pretty sure he did, yeah. Because didn't both Eduardo's get reds? Both Eduardo's, yeah. <laughs> Hey, without playing, isn't that phenomenal? Yeah, it's impressive. Ah, that's fucking... <laughs> it's ama- <laughs> did... our, our team is amazing. We get red cards without playing. What the fuck? How did Eduardo Enrique and Borja get a red when uh, Marcia Cunha was on the field and didn't get a red? That's incredible to me. <laughs> and they got a red card because they didn't want to play the next game. They needed extra vacation. Yeah, for sure, right? So it's they were too tired eye. from sitting on the bench. Ah, puta que espario. Yeah. Oh, Bruno Paz came back today at least, right? So, I mean, maybe by April he can come in for the you know, last couple of scrimmages in the league. No, yeah. don't worry. He's, he's going to get loaned out to Riwav by next season. Yeah. And uh, Look, Braganza will be sold by next season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But he's going to be sold. actually play in this team yeah. right now. I, I think he would play. Oh, that's Braganza a good would be our star midfielder right now. Yeah. Aside from Bruno. No, that's a good. You just you just brought up a couple names I like. But again, sir, if by next season he doesn't make our A squad, then I'm telling you, I would I would I would club is doomed. And then the other name you just said it uh, as well. You said uh, but again, sir, Pelina. Pelina. Pelina the, is oh a complete number him. six. He's, he's a so much better the, now than he was. The thing, he was here's the thing of Pelina that I don't he understand. He scores goals. He scores goals now. He does. He's play, he plays really well for Braga. Really well for Braga. Well, and the thing with, 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 but with Pelina that I don't understand is, is he coming back or, or, or are we selling yes, him to Braga no, for sure? No, no he he's coming back. He's, I because when I, what I heard at the time of the sale was that it's a two-year loan. Uh-huh. Um, we can sell them, but if we sell them, we have to give Braga some of the some of the money. And after the two years, Braga has an option to buy. That's what that, I heard the time of. No, he, he, he will come back because uh, the option to buy it's like I think uh, twenty million or something like that. It's exaggerated. Fucking better be exaggerated. If I recall correctly, though, Braga was like shopping him. Do you remember that? Braga is still like, shopping him. How in the January you transfer window. Him? I don't think that that deal is what we think it is. No, I, 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 I don't think, think that, it is. And, That's and, why. And I think, but if he's sold, I think Braga is entitled to like a large chunk of it. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. Like, like 20% or something. Um, but I think, I think Polinia next year will report to Sporting. Um, I know some Spanish team, I forget the name, they wanted him. Uh, was it Valencia? Uh, I, I know mm-hmm. one of, or Sevilla. I think it was or Sociedad. Or Sociedad, maybe. One, mm-hmm. one of the, they wanted him, but then Braga said no. And, um, you know, but me personally, when he comes back next year, he's our number six. You know, thank he you, should have been. He should, he should have been our number six this year. He should have been our number six last year. I agree. What are we but... even loaning him? We, we, lo- we got rid of Will. Well, we got rid of William Carvalho rescinded his contract. And Sosa Sintra thought it was a smart idea for loaning out Pelina. I think it was to pay some, <sighs> some kind of. Uh... Braga can match it. It was for Bataglia. It was for I... Bataglia. I think, yeah, I think we were paying some kind of monies we owe them. And then they I'd said, I'd rather hey. have loaned back with Taglia for two years. Yeah, I know, but he, he broke his leg. That's not his fault either, you know, against Santa Clara. But, but even before then, he was shit. He was still putting in shit performances once he came back from. from he was at least a destroyer, I feel like. He looked like a lost child. He did, was not a destroyer um, against Benfica. Who? Bataglia. Oh uh, no, no! But Tugley is still afraid of playing and getting hurt again. Yeah, he looks. Like, he doesn't even finish the game. He doesn't look like his feet under him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm content to get Pelinia back next because this season it's done. Let's, 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 let's make this very clear. I love my sport done. and I will always love my sport thing. But this season, for me, this, this plantel, this team, I have no faith. So. All we can hope for is fight for the third position. If we get the third position, it's like winning the fucking lottery. Because uh, we're done this season. Done. So let's start thinking about next season. Like you said, Braganza, 
It's a really good option to replace Bruno Fernandes. He's coming back more mature from Studio. And Pelinha is an, our number six that will replace fucking Dumbia. And Dumbia, we can sell him. And I'm telling you. And then we can... We actually re-sign Kovac, am I right? And then we have our goalie, Maxi. And, you know, we can talk about well, I know what the progression. problem is here, guys. This is the problem. Wait. I don't want to speak too soon. I'm trying I know. to figure out when, when Pat Ying is sporting. Co- oh, he's. So, so this is the deal. So his, he's on a two year loan, and Braga can match any offer. So, it, like, uh, let's say that Sevilla comes in and they say uh, yeah, six million. Braga can say, okay, six million. And then Sevilla would have to up the offer. So basically, Braga, even if they don't actually intend to match the price, if someone comes in, they can effectively drive up the price, which they then get a large chunk of the sale because that's how the deal is structured. Like, they're going to get a percentage of the sale without owning a percentage of his pass, which is ridiculous. So let's say someone comes knocking, they can drive up the price by pretending like they're going to match, even if they're just bluffing, you know? So that's, oh. what the, that's the situation. Okay, so they can say, hey, Sporting, we want to keep Pellini and we'll pay you $10 million. Yes. They could but, say that. And if, if uh, Manchester United says, we'll come in and we'll give you Sporting, we'll give you $10 million. But, well, I, let's, but, let's say, but let's say Sporting says to Manchester United, no, we're not interested in selling him. Um, well, then I don't think Braga can, can do anything in that situation. Offer, yeah. But I think okay. if someone is going to approach them, are they really going to not have the conversation? I think they are going to have the conversation. I think he's going to leave for pennies on the dollar. Me, 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 but me, me personally, if I'm, if I'm sporting, the sporting president, which I'm not, I would say no. A, every deal that we fucking see, they, they want to they wanna offer for Padilla, we're going to say no until we get him back next year. And then we'll talk about it next year when we get him back uh, fully 100% at sporting. I would fucking make, market I, value is true. More I would make no trip. deals before we get him back. No deals. Yeah, seriously. I, I wouldn't want to give one penny to fucking Braga. I know. That's what I, I would do. I, I would know. be malicious and wait until he comes back. Yeah, and then... And yeah, then so basically, because he's the contract is... Well, the contract is over June 30th. June, yeah. So it's either, either the bullshit's going to happen now in January in the next two weeks or the month of June once the window opens. Uh, I'd, I'd, I say keep him because he, he's now nice and mature. He's scoring some goals yeah. and, and ups his salary a little bit so you can yeah. stay happy and then keep him. I mean, yeah. he's, we, we have him locked up through 2023, which is actually pretty good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. Very good. All right, boys, let's move on to the Braga game. Um, I'll also go through the lineups. I just had them open here. Bear with me for a sec. Um, where is this thing now? Tuesday. Boom. So we had Luis Maxinet. Um, uh, we had Max Jaquina, Jeremy Mathieu, Sebastian Kwatsch, and Christovsky in defense. We had Dumbia, Bataglia, and Bruno Fernandes in midfield uh, with Wendell also and uh, Kamashu and Luis Philippe up top. Braga had uh, Mateus Magalhães in net, Vitor Tormena, Bruno Viana, Roa Silva, and Skeira in defense. That are Isgayu, Fran Sergio, João Novaes, and Ricardo Horta in midfield with Galeno and Paulinho up top. Um, Steph, I'll start this one off with you. Uh, what were your thoughts on this game? Well, you know, typically, like always, we like to fucking uh, stay behind the, the curve ball and, and Braga scored the goal in the first minutes of the game, and then uh, which made us actually play better. Uh, but the game was pretty much divided. Uh, between uh, Sporting and Braga, they were playing actually a, a, a pretty game, a good game to watch. Uh, we could have scored a few times, of course we didn't. And then uh, uh, in a quick play from Bruno Fernandes to uh, Mathieu, he scored that goal and tied up the game. Uh, that was the, f- the the first court at the end of the first half to 1-1. Then the second half, I thought that uh, Sporting would actually... Uh, would come out and blazing and try to put the game away, uh, which didn't happen. And then with the substitution with Bolasi, uh, then it was shown a red card. Some people say 
he didn't deserve the red card. Some people say he, he, he did deserve it. Uh, he was actually careless. You know, a play of that magnitude with so much experience, he has to be a lot smarter when approaching uh, you know, certain plays. Uh, he was clumsy with that play. That's why he was shown the red card. Um, I don't blame the referee. I blame more the, the, the player because, you know, you should know by now uh, after playing X amount of years of football uh, to avoid these kind of tackles. Uh, and then after that, uh, Braga took over of the game, basically. When we lost uh, one player, when we down one player, El Siles, uh, he showed um, that uh, he was scared and afraid. He told the team to, to drop the lines. And then we times like Elitos Burrados, we couldn't even make uh, four, four passes. Every time we got the ball back, we lost it within seconds, which gave uh, Braga chance after chance after chance after chance. And eventually they would score and they did. Paulinho. Um, you know, you, you can sustain uh, one, two, three, four, five crosses, but 20 crosses, it's way too many. Uh, they're going to be lucky in one of those crosses. And they were. Paulinho he scored a, a beautiful goal, actually. Uh, so Braga won uh, fair and square. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I blame this one on Silas. Um, I don't think he's equipped to be a sporting uh, coach. Uh, he, he, he has shown that he lacks of uh, vision uh, and his substitutions, they're always late. I'll give him, you know, I'll give him this much. He has a shitty team. We all agree on that. But he, he could actually demote some of these people and promote some of our youth, which they lack of motivation with Lionel Ponce. And we have a lot of quality players in the uh, under-23. And they're losing. You could see that team is losing interest. So why not promote them and let them play in, in our A squad, which we need a breath of uh, fresh, fresh air because we lack of it. We need people with the motivation, uh, with the new dynamics. And so I don't, you know, this game against Braga, we, we lost fair and square. And, um, and, and there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing I can say. It's, it's going to be this way the whole season. If, if we don't score early, we're going to suffer at the end. We need to score early to give us a little bit of, you know, a, a deep breath and say, okay, now, guys, we can relax because we're up ahead. So let's go for the second goal. Uh, if we if we start losing, most likely we will lose those games, um, and that's how the way our team is built, and the motivation is 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 gone. You could see Acuna getting frustrated. The be our best players are getting frustrated. Like Bruno Fernandes, you saw it at the end of the game. He even tapped the camera. Um, yeah. He was he was even talking to a police officer. Um, <laughs> I know he he was so frustrated. Acuna is getting frustrated. Uh, Mathieu has been frustrated and, you know, towards the end of the game, he shouldn't have done that, but he did it. Um, you know, and it, it puts the team on the on the tippy toes. And our team is very fragile. If we don't start the game winning, if we start losing, most likely, and I know I'm repeating myself, we will lose those games. Uh, so that has to change. And it takes a lot of work off the field, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, group sessions, uh, you know, and Sealers, I don't think he's equipped. I don't think so. I think we, we need a new coach, a new coach that, that has big balls and, and tells, you know, certain plays, you, you know, you're not giving me what I'm expected, expecting, so you're going to be demoted. So it has to be a combination of something. The market uh, brought Sporad. Maybe Sporad will be a, a good addition to the team. But imagine him coming to a team that's it's broken, not playing as a team, because our team is not playing as a team. How is he going to score? He can do it by himself. You know, UCB mm -hmm. Fika playing beautiful football. Uh, you know, they're playing well and they're winning their games. And when they don't win their games, when they struggle like Guimarães and Afs, than arbitrizing ajudos. And that's a fact. And uh, I mean, mm -hmm. if we have Bifikisha fans listening, I'm not saying anything stupid. It's the truth. Well, the games they need help with, they get the help. We never get the help. We, we always get the Shingozu. We, we always get the dildo up our asses. 
Mas, mas a, a gente também joga, não joga nada, meu. We, we can play. Para, parece que até gostamos, meu. I think, I, I think so, man. Yeah, man. Oh, no. Our team is playing like shit, and uh, if we don't play as a team, then we lose, and that's what's going on. There's no chemistry. There's, we play like maybe good for five minutes, and then it goes away. Yeah. So, you know, against Braga, we deserve to lose. Braga deserves to be in the final. And I'm not going to say I hope they win the final because I don't give a shit if they win or if it's Porto, which to, today Porto got uh, the help from the referee. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I really wanted a Mingu final. But, yeah, me uh, too. Me too. I was hoping for Braga Guimarães. With a, with a Guimarães win, obviously. But. That, w- that would have been great for the, the Minhotes. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, anyways, Christian, also, what are your thoughts on this game? Before I give him my little quick two cents. Yeah, I agree with Chev. I mean, they came out and they were, like, down our throats. We were, they were forcing turnovers in our half. They were, they were putting us under pressure, which is honestly a similar tactic to what Benfica did. How many fucking times did our midfielders lose the ball in our own half mm-hmm. in these two games combined? 30? Like, unreal. unreal. Yeah, 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 that's a good statistic, yep. Unreal. I just made that statistic mm-hmm. up. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's theoretical. But fucking how many times did it happen? It probably didn't happen thirty times. It probably happened like. But, 18, but you but know, but like you know, but you know why? Because Ruben and Murin and Bruno Lies, they know um, what's his name. Dumbia cannot play with crosses atrás. No pod. They pressure, know. They know. The ball, yeah. He lose the ball, and they know that. Yeah, it's smart. They took advantage of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, and then they, they, they scored, you know, right as a result of that. In fact, in the first 10 minutes, they were, they were all over us. Um, and then basically the only reason that we weren't down probably more, we could have been down probably at least 2 nothing at half, but we had a, you know, a, a nice link up between Bruno Fernandes and Matthew on that free kick. And that's the only reason it wasn't worse. And, you know, obviously, Ad, or Belasi comes in, Sent off in 15 minutes, and then that's when uh, that's when we went full, full, full third division team. Sub in a center back, take off your striker who was fucking horrible, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, take him mm-hmm. off. Well, I guess he's just a traffic cone at that point, basically. Um, put in a center back, park the bus with 10 men, and hope you can sh- contain. Four games in this competition in the knockout round the last two years. Four wins in PKs. He was really pushing to try to get that to five, um, and then probably in the final, probably would have would have been at, you know had that in the back of his mind too. Um, so I, the whole goal was just fucking cowardly, just try to get to PKs, um, and you know we uh, I guess we almost held out, but we didn't deserve we didn't if we would have won this in PKs, we obviously wouldn't have deserved it. Um, the better team won. They 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 could have won three nothing on or four nothing on a different day. Um, they are way better than us. Um, and then uh, yeah, we I mean we kind of touched on some of the scenes afterwards. Bruno Fernandes, Matthew. I said this in the group. If Matthew is gonna do that, he's got to at least take him out. You can't like half ass yeah. it. You know you're still gonna get a red card either way if you're if you're doing a ridiculously late challenge like that. So might as well you know make it worth it. So he didn't even do that. Um, I actually don't hate Esgaio either. It could have been Cicada or, or any of those other assholes. But Esgaio, you know, he's he's our guy. He's, he could be worse, you know? I would have preferred if it was Cicada, to be honest. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> those, are my, those are my thoughts. I mean, it, it's, it was atrocious. And the, the, the turnout was fucking atrocious, too. They didn't even have the upper level open. Yeah, 10,000. Yeah. Braga is the home <laughs> team. And we're yep. supposed to be a big club, and combined, you have less fans than Vitoria Guimarães. But, yep. but you know, say that. you know who I blame? I blame a mm. Liga. Pedro Proença, I agree. You know, he why? was, he was or Salazar or Salvador Proença Verand is all yucking it up in the press box yesterday. Do you know why I blame mm-hmm. them? Because the Tasa de Liga shouldn't be in Braga all the time. It is no, that's, stupid, man. We have all these stadiums the for the Euro. A baby no. who never gets mm-hmm. used, lady, and never gets used. Like, come on. 
I'm glad it was. Yeah. I, I'm glad. I'm glad it was a poor attendance because fucking it should be a bidding system, just like the Super Bowl. If you advertise it a year in advance, say this year the Tasa of the Liga will be example. I'm just going to give an example. No Funchal, no Maritim, no Barreiros. Then people will can plan ahead. I could plan ahead. Hey, fucking hey. Maybe Sporting will make it. It will be fun to go to Funchal. Uh, let's go. I'll talk to the wife. A week in, you know, we'll go for a week. We'll get to know Funchal and all that stuff. But they don't know how to promote in Portugal. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, it has problem. gotten really stale in Braga the past couple of years. And that's why people... It was fine f- at first, but yeah, now it's stale. It's stale now. I mean, we had a, a sporting fan called uma Cabeça in Braga. You guys don't even know about that. No, what's that? Yeah, the two, three Braga fans, they... Uh, they had uh, one of those uh, batons and they stroke him on the head and open mm-hmm. open wide and they call they had to call the oh know, I saw something about that but they I fucked them up yeah years. they fucked them, yeah so they why the fuck why would you take your family to uh, to to Braga yeah you know and, I mean, and not to mention this uh, is I don't know if it's on Saturday or Sunday but there's about to be a league uh, cup final that's supposed to be on neutral ground where there is a home team. You know what I mean? Like that's that's another reason why it's ridiculous to have these things in Braga. Well, yeah, there's so many, exactly. So exactly. many stadiums in Portugal exactly. you can play it should, it, should, it should be a bidding system, and then if let's say the ne- the next game will be Guimarães, and then Guimarães wins the bid, and now they have the whole year to to advertise it, sponsor it, so everybody knows it, like we do here in the, in America. And uh, like they do in Portugal, for Taça Portugal. No, Taça Portugal também sempre em Lisboa, cara. So, so th- then, if Guimarães would qualify to the final, well, it's not their fault, you know, because they won the bid and they got the final, then be it. Because it, it happened to Sporting and Taça UEFA. I don't know if you guys remember when we had the final. In our oh, stadium. I remember. I yeah. fucking remember. And we, I know, me too. <laughs> we lost 3-1. <laughs> <laughs> I was at Tony de Caneca watching the fucking game and uh, I got Tony really de Caneca. <laughs> <laughs> I got <laughs> Tony. Oh, yeah, okay, fucking I... Wagner loved, baby. We Tava got Wagner cu... loved in the Tava, ass. Tava com mula cheia e bêbado e perdemos. Ah, foda-se. Como não estavas bêbado, caralho. Happy. I was happy. <laughs> happy, yeah. Not bêbado. Happy, happy. <laughs> I was single, though, so it doesn't matter. Hey, in the melhor, I mean, uh... <laughs> anyways, yeah, man, horrible game. I, uh, I can't say nothing else that you guys haven't said, bro. Horrible game. Uh, horrible. Uh, Another uh, one. One thing on one thing on Luis Felipe is um, oh, I, I, I hate I hate this walking that I see from him. I, I hated it from Baz Dost, and I'd be I, I'm honestly Baz Dost had more of a reason to walk than this fucker ever had. So no, um, he, I don't can, know he why. Can fuck right off. He can, uh, we can get Sporar. He can't the bench, hold the ball joints, He can fuck right off. I don't know he why can't. he thinks he's all that. I don't, I don't fucking get it. All this pro- oh, the sporting players, for some reason, they think they know it all. They think they fucking, the shit that don't They think, think they're some top shit. They don't win fuck all. They lose to oh, these clean to shit. the fucking Gil Vicente of this world. And they still think they're top shit. I, I don't know. I, I honestly, uh, okay, this is a team sport. And I hope Manchester United aren't listening or any other team that wants to buy Bruno Fernandes. I now understand why they only want to put 50, uh, 50 million towards a guy that doesn't win and that thinks he's maybe top shit for a team that, that he can't bring his team to win. I'm not even talking about the Porto, Benfica, and the Braga of this league. I'm talking about the Gil Vicente, the Porto Menezes, the Riwabs of this league. If you can't pull up, if you can't push your team to win against them, how how... You know, helpful are you going to be when it's a Manchester United Liverpool and Liverpool is one of the best teams in the world at the moment? You know what I mean? Maybe they're right until only giving us fifty million. I agree. I mean, that's and that's and that's why maybe it's bad to sell him now because summertime he might his value might decrease. He might even go for forty. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he'll do a great deal to build, and then uh, his value will go up. But if that's not the case, if Fernand Sanz, you know, doesn't play him, then we fucked. We we're gonna lose a lot of money. Yeah, and then it's like, you know, he can't stay at that point then, you know, he's, or if he does, it's just like, it's fucked, you know. He already is fucked that he's still here, you know. Yeah. 
I mean, listen, his agent, I mean, George Minch said, uh, <laughs> said today, if they're, if he's not sold in January, he's for sure sold in, in, uh, in the summer. So, you know, that's Isn't basically that his they agent said saying this he's, summer he's, he's on the way out. <laughs> yep. I don't know, man. Hey, all, all I can tell you George is George like Mance is like, I'm going to get $7 million from you assholes if it's the last fucking thing I do. Yeah. George yep. Mance, he wants, he wants money. He's fucking greedy. That's all he wants, a motherfucker. Esse caralho até vendia uma vaca assim que é um boi e ganhava dinheiro. Cigano do caralho. Oh, meu. Aquele lado, meu. Our club is doomed. We have to get rid of Varandas or we fucked. We have to get rid of Verandas, but it's a lot more than just Verandas. Oh, no. It's Verandas yeah. and his entourage. It's his entourage. It's the 50 people he gave a job to, to fucking Lavares Bolas or my merda dessas. No say, man. No say. Há tanta gente comer do Sporting, nem say. Oh, the, um, I agree, man. It's like, I never seen a club. I think we have nine vice presidents. I think we have... Uh, uh, Paulinho is like chief ropeiro, and then we have a vice chief ropeiro. We have assistant to the regional fucking ropeiro. We have at least 15, 15 oh. Paulinhos in there. Oh. Paulinho, Paulinho has his own budget, bro. Like, yo, hire whoever you want, fucking do what you gotta do. Like, the way we're spending money in this team is ridiculous yeah. for us to I be know. playing this shit. E, e depois, se tu dizes alguma coisa, they'll tell you, ah, it's a 21st century. Oh, pai, vá para o caralho. If, the, if you have no money, you can have X amount of employees. You reduce. Mm -hmm. e, and you Bro, start... All because you, have, all because you have a lot of employees doesn't mean you're doing something right. You know, yeah. you can be doing, you can monumentally be fucking up with so many people at the boat. Or, or, or you know, steering the ship, if you will. No, I agree. Like, uh, you have to go back to the basics and you have to yeah. say, we don't need nine, nine, uh, nine vice presidents. I only need one. That's all. <laughs> it, it's exactly. me and the vice president. <laughs> That's it. And then there's a team manager, there's a, a manager, there's ballers, a manager, the, the ball esquerda, a manager, the ball direita. Uh, it's like, I've never seen uh, how many assistant coaches does uh, Silas have? Honestly, I he has know the guy with the hair. He has the hair and Ferro. Ferro. He has, okay, Nelson is a goalkeeper coach, but I know that and, doesn't count. But still, I know exactly. How is it not in, when when you make it simple? It's a coach, yeah. assistant coach, uh, guarda, uh, uh, trainer de guarda goalkeeper heads. coach. Yeah, you massagist. My nada. Then you got like a fitness coach. Hey, he tem guys para estatísticas, wood para tirar a toss. Would papa os colhões every stack of toss. It's it's too many people, bro. It's like só por só por uma caralho do toss, bro. For this, it's unbelievable. And then administrators, I, I don't even know how many. I don't know all the names of these fucking administrators we have. I, I you know, it's impossible it's, to keep track of. I, I, I still know. I still don't quite understand what Hugo Vienna does. Uh, he I don't know what Betu does. I he, don't know what Betu does. He goes either. to England and like negotiates he, in quotation. He yes. goes to London. He goes to London to try to thinking? negotiate with all of England. No, <laughs> U, U Betu is the bench manager, no? Eh? Betu, oh, we're talking about Vienna. What about the Vienna. fuck is a bench? Uh, yeah, I'm talking. Um, I also don't know what Betu does. What the fuck Betu is a bench? Escort, he, he escorts Matthew to the tunnel after. <laughs> That's what he's he literally <laughs> doing. <laughs> And then, and then blames the referee as to why we lost against Braga. Yeah. Seriously, I would mind having his job because he talks to players all day long. You know, a pá, não fiques irritado. Senta-te aqui ao pé, Nico. A pá, puta perninha que isso passa. And that's all he does. Hey, the locker room is that way. I, I think, I think, I think we see, listen, a Beto, Beto in my eyes will always be a legend and a, you know, class player, class sportingista will always love him. But I think we need to get rid of this guy because... If we look at it, Pazedu didn't really thrive with him there. Kaiser, I think, got even worse the more Betu got onto the bench. Sinas doesn't even get a chance. I think if, if we talk about friction of Bruno Carvalho being on the bench, we have to talk about friction with a club legend, former club captain being on the bench. I don't know if he's pressuring these guys. I don't know what he does exactly, to be fair to him, but, uh, but I, mean, I, I, I don't know what Betu does there. He's like a, the club. 
he's like a team manager, and he's the one that uh, the, you know deals with the substitutions and talks to the fourth referee when he has to, and all that oh, stuff. What's the the what? What do we have a coach for? What do we have a manager for? That's the manager's I, job. I've never I, seen Moringu's fucking boy beside him do any of that. But it's I, always I, Moringu. I agree with you. And on the bench, it should be coach, assistant coach. Uh, the guard the reds, you message yeah, them. However, however, other, however, other fucking coaches there are, but if Beton's not a coach, then fuck off, honestly. Well, not only him, Hugvian is supposed to be the manager that uh, fights uh, 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 Hugvian, yeah, that's another one. I've never seen what, what does this player have any experience with? Has he ever been an agent None. before? Like, no. what exactly? What exactly is his expertise? In None. All you know None. what I mean? I think he. I think fucking Verandas. He wanted to put him together, and he, he he looked around the table and he said, "Uh, who wants to be the team manager?" And he raised his hand, "Me." Do you have any experience? Yeah. No. You start getting it from now on. Don't worry about it. You're the team manager. <laughs> and then he became the team yeah. manager with no fucking... Clue. You know how he hires players? He Googles them. Let me Google this name. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the only way. For sure. He's like, Jensen. damn, Belasti's sick in FIFA. He can do that crazy flick. Let's sign him. Seriously. I, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm convinced these guys play football manager and got Hesse and, and Balassi on loan, and they killed it for him on their save, and we're like, listen, Verandas, trust me, bro. These guys are going to kill it. Oh, yeah. It has It'll, to be. They use it fucking the transfer market. Go on, online, seriously. Mm -hmm. They Google, and they look at the statistics. Epa, he was good. Epa, o gajo é bom. No, a gente não... Esse gajo vai ser um crack do caralho no Sporting. É contratado já. You know who else is still on the payroll too? Isn't George Jesus' assistant coach still on the payroll? He's yeah, like well, a scout. Well, close to that. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. lead scout or some shit. Yeah. Wow, well, he, he's doing a horrible job. <laughs> no, no <laughs> shit, no <laughs> shit. Well, uh, he, he goes who from the assistant coach to scout. <laughs> he fucking goes over there. He's, he's, he's the leader of the scouting department. Com garrafão de vinho lado, ora fodas. I think I'd rather Carlos Jose be the coach than be or be the manager than be a scout. Oh, for this, I tell you, we do it more than like JJ. I tell you, we do it as much coaches, caralho. I I have the fourth division that is needed for the players. I'll give you a UEFA F license. Yeah, I, I can make one up a diploma right here in my computer. <laughs> 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 like in Portugal, hey, pai, it's a un coach American. Well, uh, yeah. Silva didn't even take <laughs> the estrangeiro. UEFA A course. It's not caralho, it's estrangeiro. I digo, I digo logo, eu não, eu não falo português. Uh, English, so. <laughs> as 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 uh, you're you're a French manager, bro. French. Uh, fuck. So. I would do French. a better I would do a better job than them. First of all, I wouldn't be sitting down on the bench so quietly. Eu dizia logo, cor filha da puta. No, I couldn't be like. <laughs> I see some players yeah. making fun of us. I mean, they don't run. That when they foul, they stay on the ground. If you lost, a, if the referee didn't fucking stop the play, you have to get up and go after the ball. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. I heard Canelas is looking for a new coach, Steph. It sounds like your style might suit them. Yeah, you say the wrong thing to them, they'll definitely fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, that's so sad. All right, right, Steph, if you want to go into uh, to modalidades real quick, another go, another another high point in our in our week. <laughs> I'll I'll go real quick because I don't want to go one by one. But um, anyway, so the only thing to salvage out of the modalidades was basically the juniors. They uh, they tied at Seychelles zero zero. The uh, under nineteen, the up and coming. They, they, uh, at the beginning of their season, they were playing terribly, but uh, that has gone away and now they've been very consistent. So, so they, they actually qualified for the, uh, uh, championship phase. Um, so, uh, congrats to those boys. They went through a difficult time. The under 23, they lost today 3 1, and they lost, uh, last weekend 2 1 against Sporting Bobby Fica. Uh, but I, on that game, we were robbed. The fucking linesman and the referee, they canceled four goals. Now, shit, four goals. And something that people 
maybe they don't know, or maybe they do know. There's no VAR in the end of 23. So whatever the the referee says and the linesman says goes. But to go to our home and cancel four goals, that's you gotta have big balls. So they managed to, to I, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say I watched that game. One, I don't know if it's the second goal that the was disallowed second. or the third. Second, it was a clear goal. It was a clear goal. Yeah. What are they, they get, doing? Yeah. Least, least of the least, it should have been two two. At the very uh, agreed. At the very least. At the very least, but you know what? It shows the poor leadership from our uh, president because it trickles down. When you when you have no charisma, when you have no leadership, when you don't show up to support your teams, then you know it trickles down. Um, then okay, Patins, we lost. It's again. so and it, sorry to interrupt, but it's so no, easy fine, to get fine. brownie points, man. If you like tweet something like, "Look at what happened in the U15 game." Number one, does he even know this happened? I don't know. Number two, most people probably don't. You tweet it out, and you're like, look at this. D- like, horrible. Fix this. Like, that's, like, that's brownie points for you. That's free brownie points, even if you're insincere. It's free brownie points. Mm-hmm. Like, just no political instincts whatsoever for this guy. Zero liter- leadership qualities. Zero, zero leadership. Zero instincts. Zero, no. like, future vision. There's just nothing there. No, yeah. no, nothing. He's, 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 he's terrible. He's terrible, terrible, terrible. Because if there's a pro- internal problem, first of all, you don't tell the media. You don't see Benfica or Porto talking about how much money they owe to this guy or to R- that girl. Remember when they completely linked their finan- leaked their financial documents? Yeah. <laughs> for like the last, like, Purposely? For like the yeah. last, like, 10 years? Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Uh, but you know, let's move on. So the ladies won five nothing against uh, uh, the Frank, the Franks. So we're still in second place behind uh, Sporting Blues Benfica uh, by three points. Uh, Braga is basically done for the title race. They already lost too many games. The big game will be on the 23rd of February against Benfica at home. So we log- lost against them in Seychelles for the for the. We got uh, fucked, and actually it was at the lose, and we got fucked. Yeah, we lost. We lost three nothing. Uh, but for the Portuguese Cup, uh, the Portuguese League, we tied 2-2 against them. Um, so we are kind of ahead of them to make the final. Um, we playing against Braga for the Portuguese Cup, I think, next week. So that's a big game for our ladies, uh, which they, they won against Braga a couple of weeks ago, uh, 3-1 at the uh, Primeiro de Maio in the old stadium, which I like better. Um, we lost in Okid Patins against uh, Real of Spain for the uh, uh, Champions League, which was at home. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, we lost against uh, Oliver Reins on basketball. I watched the whole game, actually. They went into two overtimes, and then in the second overtime, uh, we just lost. We lost uh, 93 to 88, and... Um, Oliver Reigns, they, you know, they played better than us at the end. They had more energy than we did. We, we never played as a team. We played more as individuals. Certain individuals, uh, they, they're the ones who, who scored all the points. But uh, Oliver Reigns, they played as a, as a team. Um, and then that's all I got. I mean, it was a pretty bad uh, weekend. Danny. I'm sorry, I lost you guys for a second. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, Mudali Dad's done. Let's, let's quickly preview. Um, our next game is against Maritimo on Wednesday, I believe, unless it's been moved to Sunday, but I don't think it has been. Um, so, yeah, quick, guys. What are, your, what are your thoughts and predictions on the Maritimo game? I well, believe it's at home this time. Taça Portugal on volleyball, we won 3 0 against Ginastica. Oh, my bad. And then, and then today we lost against uh, Benfica 3 0 on volleyball. Yeah, I saw we got, we got swept away today 3 0. And uh, the ladies won 3 1 in volleyball against uh, Porto, which is a big deal because Porto was undefeated. So, congrats to our ladies. 
And then Vague beat our ladies won fifty nothing, and uh, they won the, uh, the the championship, the cup. And that's it. Sure. That's it. Cool. For now. Cool. For cool. For My real. bad. I, I didn't know. I didn't know if we were done uh, with the lead dons or not. I just lost you guys for a sec. Um, but yeah, quick preview and prediction uh, of our next game against Maritimo, and we'll call it a night, boys. Uh, it is tough to predict any positive result uh, from this game. It'll be interesting to see the fan reception of the team. It'll be interesting to see the attendance. It'll be interesting to see if Sporar is in the lineup. It'll be interesting to see if Bruno Fernandes is in the lineup. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of interesting things um, to watch for outside of the game because I'm sure that part will be the least interesting part. Um, I say uh, 1-1 draw. Fair enough. How about you, Steph? I think, um, okay, so final notes. Uh, one one other thing really fast. We won against uh, Turkel and Okin Patins 5-3. And and uh, Okin okay, Barcelos going against Bifica, so they in first place, and we behind them by one point. That this game was today. Uh, uh, now my prediction for the Maritim game: I think we're going to lose. Um, I would say three-one uh, favor the Maritim. Wow! I'll be the optimistic one. I think we'll we'll scrape a result. It's going to be an ugly one. It's going to be a two-one. Um, and, and one quick question, just a yes or no answer. Um, will Bruno Fernandes be a Spartan player this time next week? Chris? Yes. Steph? No. I agree, no. All right, boys, if anything else. Where is he going? Uh, Man, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a wild one here. I think Ooh. he is going to Man U, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tottenham came in because uh, – I don't get the full context, but I did see a little clip of uh, Mourinho asking one of the journalists if Bruno went to United yet. I so. think he'll go to um, Philadelphia Union. <laughs> they need a <laughs> designated player, man. You guys, <laughs> hey, <laughs> come to Toronto, bro. Michael Bradley's no longer a designated player. So. Yeah. Hey, I'll sell them anyway, Sick. man. I'll fucking sell them anyway. I'll sell them. If the uh, the Qataris want to give sixty million, here's you your home. The same, even with the same team Brahimi's in right now, bro. <laughs> yeah, look how fun it is over there. Rifidia just quit. Yeah, in, yeah in exactly. In, in Qatar, yeah, in Qatar, sixty million. My my dos camels. I would sell them. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway. Thanks for joining us for yet another Sparta 160 end podcast. It's always good to end with a laugh. It's better than crying. Because Lord knows we probably feel like crying on the inside. I'm never talking about this fucking team. But yeah, thank you for listening to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Sparta 160 underscore EN. On Instagram, Sparta 160 EN, even though we barely ever post there. Um, and yeah, we've... Uh, we were sporting, I guess. Verandas out. Verandas out. Verandas. Vai pro puta que o pariu, seu filho da puta puta porco, caralho. <laughs>